Hi there, this is your favorite nun in the math channel, and in this video we will see what are Riemann sums, what do they geometrically mean, how can we convert them into integrals and evaluate them. So, in general, what, what is an integral is that, for example, here I have the graph of fx is equal to x squared, and the integral of x squared dx. So we want to find the area, so we will make it definite integral. Let's say from 0 to 10, it's going to give me the area, so I have the point 0 and 10, it's going to give me the area below, below this graph, okay? It's going to give me a whole this area. Uh, but if this integral is something complicated, like uh, e to the minus x squared, well, you can't find the an antiderivative for this thing, you won't be able to find an elementary antiderivative for it. How can you evaluate this integral? How can you find this integral from 0 to 10? You can use rectangles, okay? You can use it to find, uh, to do, you can use rectangles to approximate it. And if you are good enough at approximating, you can actually find this integral, okay? We will see what this means. So here, uh, I decided to put five rectangles under this graph. So what does it mean is that um, if I add all of areas of all of these rectangles, I'm going to get a bit closer to the real area, except I'm missing these white areas. I wish I could add them too. So how can I do it? Uh, if I increase the number of rectangles, here I have five rectangles, and here you, you see the graph of 50 rectangles, and let's zoom in. You see, there are really tiny graph, tiny gaps that I still need to add. So if I, if instead of putting five rectangles, if I put 50 rectangles, the area is going to be almost same to the real value of the area. Okay, so this is our motivation. And now let's see how we can do it. So here I made the graph starting from 0 to 10, but in general it can go from A to B, okay? It goes from A to B. And I put five rectangles here. Well, you don't see the most left one because it has the height of 0. We will see what, what is it. Uh, so I have five rectangles, and to be able to find, find one width of one rectangle, so we should do 10 minus 0, over 5, and it's going to give us 2 indeed. So in general, our width, which we show it by delta x, it's going to be b minus a. I'm just subtracting. I'm just taking this distance, okay, from this point to this top point, and I'm dividing it by the number of rectangles n. And if I do that, I'm going to find delta x. And I, this is same for all of them. We are taking equal distance rectangles. Uh, and how can I calculate this integral is that, uh, so I have the point 0 here, okay, or let's start from this rectangle, it's at the middle. How can I find this area? I'm just going to take f of 6, f of 6 is this height, f of 6, in my, my function is x squared, in general I can say f of 6, and if I multiply it by delta x, this was delta x, it's going to give me this area. For example, this area is f of 4 times delta x, f of 4 times delta x, f2 times delta x, f8 times delta x, f0 times delta x. So if I just add all of them up, I will get the real uh, addition of all of these rectangles. And let's see how we can formalize it. So uh, I'm actually starting, I'm actually, uh, first, let's also talk about the partitioning. So I have the point A, and then I'm adding one delta x to it. And then, then I'm adding two one more delta x to it, which is two delta x. And I'm going up to, in the end, I'm going to add uh, A plus n minus one delta x. Why is it n minus one? Because here I added a plus 0 delta x, 0, 1, 2, and if I count up to n minus 1, in the end I will have n rectangles. Well, then I also have the point B, but uh, if I want to have n rectangles, I only need to add this ones. Or I can add this ones. This is 
called right Riemann sum, and this is called left Riemann sum, but it's not so important. Uh, so let's see. I'm first starting from the point A. Let's say I have the function of f, and at each step, I'm adding I de one delta x to it. Okay, so I'm saying at each step, I'm going to increase this i by 1, and i is going to start from 0 because I want to start first counting the a, and it's going to up to n minus 1. And if I just multiply this by delta x, this is going to give me the total area of the rectangles. And let me delete this part. So instead, if I just take this limit as n goes to infinity, if I take this number of rectangles into infinity, this is going to give me the integral. And now uh, this is going to give me the integral. What, what are the bounds? Oops, sorry. Uh, let, let's talk about the bounds. So I said again, I went from A to B. So my integral is actually going to go from A to B. And my function was f. So fx dx. And that's it. This is literally equal. It's not even like converse, okay, because we took the limit as n goes to infinity. And so this is our formula. Now let's do a few examples. For example, let's do one example right at top of it. For example, I have a sum limit n goes to infinity of sum i goes from 0 to n minus 1. And let's write 1 plus 3i over n to the 4 and 3 over n. And so this is our question. We are asked, how can you find this limit? How can you find this sum? So let's see if this uh, sum is any similar to our problem. First of all, I have this limit n goes to infinity and I'm adding stuff. Uh, you, you should be careful. This sum, this representation, is not same as saying i goes from 0 to infinity. This is totally different, okay? So you should be careful. We have uh, some number of rectangles, and then we take number of rectangles. We don't add infinitely many i, okay? Uh, so if you have this form, you may think, oh, maybe I have a Riemann sum, okay? Uh, and now let's compare the forms. I have these parts being same. So for always what you can do is just determine what is delta x. So I have i times something. So whatever you're multiplying i with, it's going to be your delta x. So here you can say my delta x is equal to 3 over n. And I, I have delta x being multiplied out here. So this is delta x. I have this thing, these two matches. I have this thing, i times delta x. These two also matches. And so a is also matches. So we can say a is equal to 1. And I have this power of 4. So what is this? Uh, well, I know that f of a plus i delta x is equal to this thing. To the power of 4. So my fx actually takes this value and gets it power to the 4. So I can say my function fx is equal to x to the 4. And that's it. So let's delete this question mark. And I can say this is going to be in equal to the integral of x to the 4 dx. So what are my bounds? I, say I found a is equal to 1. So what is b? Well, I know that delta x is equal to b minus a, a is 1, over n. So b minus 1 is 3, therefore I can just say b is equal to 4. And that's it. This is going to be my answer. So if I integrate it, it's going to be x to the 5 over 5 from 4 to 1, and it's going to be just 4 to the 5 over 5, and this is going to be 1, 4 to the 5 minus 1 over 5. And this is my answer. So let's do... Uh, one more example uh, and this one is going to be a bit more useful okay because uh, this is a famous limit so let's consider the limit as n goes to infinity uh, or let's write it without summation and then we can convert it into summation so i have 1 over n plus 1 
1 over n plus 2 up to 1 over 2n. Well, it doesn't look like a Riemann sum, does it? No. Uh, so, and you can say that, so, oh, if I put n is equal to infinity, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. So I have 0 times n, which is just 0. No, it's not, because we have n times 0, and n goes to infinity. So this is actually like infinity times 0. So it's not equal to 0, okay? It's indeterminate. We don't know. Well, it can be equal to 0, but we will see. So let's write this thing like a Riemann sum. So I will take this part and let's write it in uh, summation form. Or let's first, okay, let's write it in this form. So I have 1 over n plus k. If I write it like 1 over n plus k, this k goes from 1 to n. k goes from, but let's, let's make it i okay so let's stick to the notation i goes from 1 to n and here uh, i didn't mention it clearly but instead of adding i's from 0 to n minus 1 i said this is left Riemann sum if i add it from 1 to n it's going to give me the right Riemann sum and right Riemann sum is a bit bigger than our integral and left one is a bit smaller than our integral but if you take limits they are both same, okay? So you can use any of them. So I have 1 over n plus i. So this is my, uh, it's this part. I also have limit. Uh, but I'm only adding something. And first of all, I don't have dx. And so let's see. I also need to have dx being multiplied outside. And this dx is usually something like 1 over n. It can be anything over n. Here it was 3 over n. But in general, it's going to be like 1 over n. So let's take this thing into 1 over n parentheses. So I have i from, sorry, 1 to n. I'm going to take this thing into 1 over n parentheses, which means just I'm taking this denominator into n parentheses. So it's going to be 1 plus i over n. Or I can say this is i times 1 over n. Because now it looks a bit more like a Riemann sum. What we have said before is that whatever you are multiplying i with, this is going to be your delta x. So delta x is going to be equal to 1 over n. And I have... I'm multiplying this one by 1 over n here, so I'm good. I have delta x times this thing. Uh, so do I have an a value? What is it? Uh, well, here you have few options, okay? So either you, you can say, okay, well, I found it. My function is just taking all of the values. And so here you can kind of replace this thing by x and you can say this is 1 over 1 plus x but you're actually if you take this one before you don't have an a value because you already took everything you have plus zero here so you can say i'm going from zero and if you look at end of it so delta x is 1 over n which is equal to b minus a here i said a is zero so it's b minus zero over n so your b value is going to be equal to 1. And this is going to be our answer. Or uh, let's do it with other way. What if, what if you want to take this thing as a? OK, how can you do that then? Uh, so this is the second representation. You can solve it from here. OK, this is just ln 1 plus x. And it's from 1 to 0. If you put x is equal to 1, it's going to give you ln 2. It's, it's, if you put 0, it's going to give you ln 1, which is 0 minus 0. We don't need to write it. Okay, so this is equal to ln 2. This limit goes to ln 2. And instead, if you want to pick this 1 as a value, here's what would happen. Uh, so you have a plus i delta x. So you took this whole thing, okay? So whatever you have, you have f of a plus 
i delta x and this is equal to 1 over a plus i delta x. So your function is fx is equal to 1 over x. Okay. In the second case, in the, the first case, we had the function of f of, f of 1 over 1 plus x. So I have the function of 1 over x dx. And so I said my a is equal to 1. So if a is equal to 1, delta x is, again, just it's 1 over n. And this is b minus a over n. And a is 1 over n. So my b is going to be b minus 1 is equal to 1. b is going to be equal to 2. And this is actually the same integral with this one. Well, of course, it had to be. So we just we just wanted to write it in two ways. Okay, so you have a bit freedom choosing it. And if you if you want to just evaluate this integral, we can say it's ln x from 2 to 1. If I put x is equal to 2, ln 2 minus ln 1. Ln 1 is 0, so it's ln 2. And this is how to deal with Riemann sums.